But if I know my industry is being possibly taken over by the machines, shall we say, do we panic now or later? Hello everyone, welcome to the studio. It's Martin from Mad Street Records. I hope you're keeping well. And as ever, making good music in your own recording space. I think it's rant time. Let's talk about something which is on my mind at the moment and nothing pre-prepared. It's just a keyboard and some mixing stuff in front of me and a screen recording this vocal. Um, and it's something which I'm worried about as well so let's discuss so how would you feel if i said to you 10 years from now five years from now what you're doing in the studio is going to be completely redundant we don't need you you'd probably think well hang on i've just <laughs> i've just invested some time possibly recording audio um, doing training i mean and buying equipment creating a studio space whether it's from home or you've hired a place to offer your services for mastering and mixing recording all that side of stuff but then suddenly you realize your job is redundant now what do i mean by this i'm talking about the latest thing which i see a lot online which is e mastering mixing houses offering you a package which involves people you won't know mixing your stuff you send it back everyone's happy now you might think well this is a convenience we're living in a world which we need to have a scenario where things can be done easily i mean i'm young enough hopefully to, well thankfully that i don't remember the initial release and the turmoil it must have caused in the studio for for example pro tools i think it was initially sort of in, introduced in 1989 then 91 it hit the market properly with a pro tool system and i'm sure from stuff that i've seen online the engineers of the day producers were like what is going on why am I looking at a computer screen? I didn't get involved in music to be looking at a screen. Lo and behold, 30 years later, way before that even, we are all looking at a computer screen at some point when it comes to recording music, editing film, etc. Now, the e-mastering, for example, thing is that you, were to, you are to mix your track, then you send it off to a lab, I'm presuming, and they will then do the magic via a computer program you can put in a reference of what you roughly want to sound like so no doubt that algorithm program will literally look at the eq spectrum and figure out what you want to be doing there's no people involved at the point of actually the mastering now when i look at an album i one of the first things I do um, initially as a musician, I used to look at who was involved with the record, who recorded it, who was the producer, who, where, what studio did they use, what uh, mixer did they use, who was in the band. You know, you never really used to know this sort of stuff unless you looked on the actual CD sleeve, for example. Um, but does anyone care now? You know, that is kind of where it's going to go, I'm thinking. And I'm thinking out loud. So feel free to to and fro with me with this one and see what your opinions are. But my opinion is that part of the enjoyment of listening to music is knowing who mixed it, who mastered it, who recorded it, obviously, um, and obviously who wrote the stuff. But we're talking about the, the, if you like, technical sides of it at this stage, not the creative. But for me, part of the editing, part of the mixing, a massive part of the mastering is the people involved or are the people involved the experience they have i remember when i was at audio college i was told about mastering for the first time and i was like what is this thing i then checked all the cds that i liked who was the mastering engineer what's going on where was it sent to and it was always a person being the big word in the room at the moment <laughs> it was it wasn't done by you know so and so mastering company online it was always an engineer, someone who had crafted and learnt their craft um, to become a professional in what they do to create these amazing sounding records that maybe we were all brought up on, um, if you're of a certain age, possibly. Um, it just takes away, on my perspective, the importance of learning a craft if you feel as a musician, i.e. maybe our customers, um, oh, I don't need to go to a person. I don't have to find a studio. I don't have to find a mastering engineer because I can just send it to this website. I talk to nobody. I literally type in what I want. 
I can tweak little things I like and it's done. You might think, well, what's the problem? It's working. But doesn't that lose an industry of creative people that turn technical, um, people that care about music? It's like succumbing to just using word processing and not writing on paper anymore, which there you go, that happened. (laughs) And I'm sure there's many people that could probably put hand on heart and say, I don't remember the last time I wrote anything more than a few little scribbly notes on a posted note, possibly to Sam going out or a little label. We just don't possibly think about these changes until they suddenly hit our own industry. Now, I'm always massively open-minded. I don't like to get into the whole bog of I'm right, you're wrong. Now, this is just my opinion, but my opinion really strongly stays with the sense of if we continue to just bow down to and support these online services that quite simply go to computer programs, what is the future for people that want to get into mastering music? What is the future for people that want to get into mixing music? If they don't have any sort of combat when it comes to price and when it comes to the advertising, that side of things, when these bigger companies do end up offering such a unbeatable package that quite frankly, um, you can't beat, you know? Um, I suppose on the other aspect of that you might say well what is the point of going to a person if I'm going to get a similar or happy result for something sounding good on a mobile phone it's then make sure it's tailored 100% for Spotify or whatever the medium would be at that point you know uh, for playback on all different devices and I think that's a really valid point as well because let's face it the audio industry if you watch YouTube videos which I do and I like to understand what other audio engineers are talking about and what their output is and ones from the past that are kind of in the teaching zone now and the ones in the present talking about what they do um, they always have different ideas they always have different aspects and they always come back with the same thing it doesn't matter what you do as long as you like what you hear so it does make it a real compelling argument for the e-companies that are literally software companies offering musicians that maybe can't even reach out to the expensive mastering engineers a real good option so you can see my confusion with this entire thing because it's like on one end it's got some real advantages on the other end it's got some real disadvantages for people like maybe you and me and what we do um if you were maybe a younger person now possibly mid-teens early teens whatever wanting to get into music would you even think about mastering or mixing if you know already these sort of avenues are kind of covered you know by an online mastering piece of software and it will just do the job um for what you need it is a real hard one and i suppose on the tangent i would probably go with well you could look at the need for massive recording studios they clearly have declined for a long long time for the last 10 years without question if not before that um if you're able to do fantastic stuff in a home setup um why on earth would you go and invest in such an expensive outlet of recording just in a big room um, with an expensive load of gear when you can just get the one unit of the same sound desk and run everything through it and it all sounds the same anyway. But it, that always leads to my end point, which is because everything in the end, which I believe is a great result, is not done by a computer It is still listened to and managed by a human being, someone who has experience, care, knowledge um, in creating a fantastic record with emotion and feeling and all the technicalities mixed with it. So I'll leave that with you. If you've got any insights for your own conclusion towards e-mastering, e-mixing, is there any recording? I don't know, probably not, unless you do all electrical stuff. Um, Let me know. I'd love to hear your insights. I'd love to understand, does it annoy you? Are you bothered? Is it something you've used and you thought, you know what, I saved a hell of a lot of money 
I'm sticking with this e thing um, because the software won the day. Um, Is it new to you? Have you just figured it out now that this is something that they're putting out and you've looked into it? What are your thoughts? It'd be good to hear your insight. I mean, I'm always open for um, learning, knowledge, etc. But if I know my industry is being possibly taken over by the machines, (laughs) shall we say, do we panic now or later? Until the next video, guys, stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye for now.